Welcome to War Thunder Naval. I am Commander Tyriel, and this is the Mikhail Kutuzov, the newest and most modern iteration of the Sverdlov class light cruiser. At the end of the Second World War, Joseph Stalin initiated a major modernization and expansion of the Soviet Navy, with the aims to turn it into a global blue water navy. To achieve this goal, large numbers of cruisers were required, with roles including escorting heavier ships and leading destroyer squadrons. To speed up production, it was decided to build an improved version of the pre-war Chapayev-class cruiser. The Sverdlov-class cruisers, Soviet designation Project 68 Biz, were the last conventional gun cruisers built for the Soviet Navy. Built in the 1950s, they were based on Soviet, German and Italian designs and concepts conceived prior to World War II. They were modified to improve their sea keeping capabilities, allowing them to run at high speed in the rough waters of the North Atlantic. The basic hull modernised and had better armour protection than the vast majority of post-World War II gun cruiser designs built and deployed by their peer nations. They also carried an extensive suite of modern radar equipment and anti-aircraft artillery. The Soviets originally planned to build 40 ships in the class, which would have been supported by the Stalingrad-class battlecruisers and aircraft carriers. This class of cruisers satisfied the desires of Stalin and of the leadership of the Soviet Navy, and was built to keep within a naval doctrine that focused on three priorities. Supporting the defence of Soviet coastline, operating out of naval bases worldwide, and protecting the Arctic, Baltic, Mediterranean and Black Sea interests. Secondary missions envisioned for these class of ships were commerce raiding and political presence in the Third World. Shortly after design, they were considered obsolete for the Missile Age had begun. And this was an age in which defensive and anti-submarine resources were the priority. Soviet Premier Khrushchev and the Soviet Defence Staff grudgingly conceded some cruisers for limited roles as flagships in strategic and tactical naval operations. Within the Soviet Navy, leading admirals still believed that big cruisers would still be useful in the sort of operations planned in Cuba and in support of Indonesia. The Sverdlovs were also a threat to British and Dutch navies, which lacked 24-hour day-night carrier capability before the advent of satellite surveillance. The Royal Navy reacted to the big ship threat, as their own Crown Colony and Tiger-class gun cruisers lacked the armour, range and speed required to counter the Sverdlovs. The British answer to the threat was to introduce the Buccaneer. The Sverdlov class displaced 13,600 tonnes standard and 16,640 tonnes at full load. They were 210 metres or 690 feet long overall, they had a beam of 22 metres or 72 feet, and they had a draft of 6.9 metres or 23 feet. The hull was a completely welded new design and the ships had a double bottom for over 75% of their length. The ship also had 23 watertight bulkheads. The Sverdlovs had six boilers providing steam to two geared steam turbines generating 118,100 shaft horsepower. This gave the ships a maximum speed of 32.5 knots or 60 km per hour. The cruisers had a range of 9,000 nautical miles at 18 knots. The Sverdlov class cruiser's main armament includes 12 152mm or 6 inch guns mounted in four triple turrets. They also had 12 100mm in six twin mounts. For anti aircraft weaponry, they had 32 37mm anti aircraft guns in six twin mounts, and they were also equipped with 10 530mm torpedo tubes in two mountings of five each. The ship has access to four types of ammunition for the main armament. The high explosive shell packs 6 kilos of explosive filler, which is useful for combating coastal vessels and weaker destroyers, starting fires or creating flooding on larger ships. The armor-piercing cap ballistic cap shell is an essential tool when fighting cruisers at long range, especially heavy ones. While it is significantly reduced explosive filler compared to other rounds, it has by far the most penetration. And the semi-armor piercing shell is a shell which has practically the same level of filler as a high explosive shell at 5.9 kilos, but it can also penetrate a decent amount of armor and should be the main shell that you use at most combat ranges. The Sverdlovs have 100mm belt armor and 50mm armored deck. The turrets were shielded by 175mm of armor and a conning tower with 150mm of armor. In the 1960s, all torpedo tubes were removed from all ships of the class. A large modernization program was initiated in 1970 aimed at further improvement of the air defense of Soviet cruisers. Four ships were refitted with an enlarged bridge in the late 1970s, including Mikhail Kutuzov. 
These ships had four of their 37 twin mounts removed and eight paired AK-230 mounts with rapid-fire 30mm guns appearing on platforms around the bow superstructure. On July 28, 2002, Mikhail Kutuzov was opened to the public as a museum ship in Novorossiysk. So the main difference between this ship, the Mikhail Kutuzov, and this Vedlov is the more modernization of the AA. Um, she's got the eight AK-230s on the bridge and they do a lot of work with, to ships within four kilometers. Unfortunately, at the battle rating that you see, you rarely see aircraft, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's still an exciting thing because they are missile defense capable guns. Unfortunately, the radar search track isn't bound to those guns, so you can't actually use them to track aircraft with a lead indicator. But the sheer amount of volume that you put up with those guns is, <laughs> is quite fun. You do lose access to the 10 torpedoes that this third love still has, which can be a deal breaker, I believe. I like to use torpedoes up close and the Russian torpedoes are very useful. They're either very fast, short range, or you can have a decent speed, medium range torpedo. So it's really up to the individual captain. But with the addition of the Mikhail Kutuzov, Russian captains now have up to four 6.0 light cruisers that are nearly identical and extremely capable. Since the battle rating changes and all of the battle cruisers and heavy battleships have moved up to 7.0, you do see more down tier games as a 6.0 cruiser. I have anyway. Out of all of my games, I probably had about 80% of them were down tiers. And in those games, you take out the light cruisers and the other heavy cruisers, and then it's just a real field day. I've managed to nearly spade both the Sverdlov and the Mikhail Kutuzov in less than 20 games. Also, uh, using the light cruiser with the new visuals, it's just been great. The ammo racking actually feels like you're blowing people to hell. So, Gaijin get bonus points for that. Look at these life rafts just going to the moon and back. Uh, in the rare games that I have been up tiered, there's been maybe two to three max battle cruisers or battleships, and you either just stay away from them or spam copious amounts of high explosive shells at them <laughs> because high explosive shells just seem to work. Don't know if it's penetrating the deck armor or they just haven't modeled them properly, but guarantee you using high explosives on a battleship captain will draw his ire to you, that's for sure. Light cruisers also seem to be the best way to earn Silver Lions out of all of the ship classes, simply because of the battle rating placement and the amount of rounds that you can put down range. If you learn how to draw aggro and how to de deflect aggro away from yourself, you'll also do well in a light cruiser. It doesn't matter what battle rating you're at. They're generally fun. Yes, you will pop like a destroyer if you're hit by a battleship, but that's half the fun for me. I like punching above my weight. Unfortunately, the, the shift of the battle ratings has sort of left 5.0 cruisers in a very, very touchy state. A lot of the pre-war cruisers now are just having an absolutely terrible time. As my friend here, Nubius Maximus, will explain to you. And just a final word on the Admiral Kutuzov. The AA guns sound good in theory, but unfortunately you only have 8,000 rounds. So if you let them do what they want, you'll either run out of ammunition or you have to turn them off and sneaky little years will get through and drop a thousand kilo bombs on you. Doesn't I got him anyway, so we're even. And I didn't get sunk. But he got me. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Plenty more to come. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Until next time, Commander Tyrael, out.